and welcome to this edition of RTS Yorkshire Talks. I'm Fiona Thompson and I'm chair of the RTS Yorkshire Centre. Now we hope with these talks to give you a wee bit of an insight into what's going on in our beautiful region, what we call God's own country, during and beyond the current coronavirus crisis. And today's talk is with our very own Yorkshire vet, Julian Norton. The Yorkshire vet hit our screens in 2015. In it, we follow both Julian and his colleague, Peter Wright, as they cover what we all call James Herriot country. You don't really need me to tell you all that. What you may not know is that this is co-produced by Group M Entertainment with our very own Leeds-based Daisy Beck Productions. It is very much a Yorkshire award-winning production. Now, enough of me. You want to hear from Julian. So, Julian, welcome. Thank you for joining Hi. us today. Hi, Thanks for having me. And tell us, start off, we're, we're looking at you, you're in your home, you've had a busy day today, but how are you and your family coping during this coronavirus landscape we're in? Yeah, it's not been very easy, has it? It's been challenging on many, many levels. Um, and I guess, in short, we're coping okay, um, possibly better than some uh, might be. Um, work's been... Um, challenging but it's been a pleasure really to get out and about as vets were classed as key workers so um, I've been out and about and, and working in the fresh air and, and the countryside almost as normal so that's been um, been quite a, a relief uh, but it, it's been tough generally man we just learned today my younger son's a very um, good swimmer swims at a, a high level and we were hoping today that the swimming pools will be open at least for the clubs to train and that's not happening um, at the moment for, for the foreseeable future. So you can go to the pub and to Ikea and places like that, but our kids don't get to go to school and they don't get to, you know, do some of the sporting stuff that they like to do. So it's been challenges, yeah, on, on many levels, really. Um, but we're getting there, getting through it. Hopefully the end is in sight. Yeah, and it's frustrating, isn't it? Because it's hard to explain sometimes why we can do certain things and can't do other things. Then there's a whole homeschooling as well. Have you been involved in that or as a key worker as your children been going to school? Uh, no, they've been, they've been looking after themselves, actually. Um, Jack's uh, 17 and Archie's 14, so they're, they're pretty much able to look after themselves and they're, they're pretty well motivated. And, and luckily, they've been getting an awful lot of, of work sent down the computer um, much like we're talking uh, uh, at the moment. So they've, they've been okay, actually. They've not missed out too much on on education, but they've missed out a lot on the social things that kids should be doing at that age. So, uh, so yeah, I, I've um, been helping a little bit with teaching, but only as far as my A-level chemistry goes. Um, I've still got it, though, apparently. I can still uh, still work out some of the formulae. So, um, so I've been helping a bit, but to be honest, uh, they, they don't really need my help as uh, uh, as much as some kids might. So I'm quite lucky in that regard. And as you say, you know, you've been out and about because your work continues. So how has it been being a vet during this this time and managing the social distancing and all that sort of thing with your clients? Yeah, it's been it's been quite hard, really. Um, farm work has been broadly speaking similar um, in that to cow a cow or lamb a sheep that still needs to be done and and some of it whilst we've done our best to maintain the social or anti-social distancing I call it um, if you're lambing a sheep you've got to have someone holding on to the head end else it runs off and you can't do the job yeah. so it's been difficult to do effectively um, I, I think you know as vets we're very good at managing risk and working out safe ways of doing things um, uh, and so, you know, we're, we're pretty pragmatic. So you work ways around things. Um, and out in the fresh air, you know, you would argue that the, the risk is probably less than in a close environment. Um, back in the surgery, it's been quite hard because um, we've not been able to allow owners to come in with their, their pets into the practice. So that's brought problems. Um, and, and certainly at the beginning, I felt like we weren't, able to do the job very effectively because there were so many hurdles put in the way um, and it's hard enough at the best of times but when you've got all these other you know obstacles to get round and past and over um, it, it wasn't so easy but um, like I say you know it, it was um, 
you know, great to be able to get out and, and work a, a lot better than uh, than some people were. Yeah. And have you been doing any filming during the, this time or or did that stop as soon as, as lockdown came in? Yeah, it stopped pretty much. Um, I think we had about six weeks completely off. The only thing that got filmed was a, a, a pickup uh, that my son did on his on his fancy phone, um, which got used in um, one of the one of the episodes that the edit were were keen for. Um, we're back now working uh, outside, so so not within the practice, but in places where we can um, film outside, so on farms and horse yards and and that sort of thing. Um, with a, a trimmed down team, so normally there's a, uh, a, a camera and a sound guy, um, and we've been working just with just with one camera um, in a in a sort of trimmed down way, uh, and it's been okay actually. We've got some quite good stuff over the last few weeks, um, which which I guess is a bonus compared to uh, not getting anything. Absolutely, um, I think you know Daisy Beck and, and the guys there and and the the teams. Are, are pretty adaptable and um you know stick very stringently to the health and safety but i think with small teams and small units we've got a lot more flexibility than some of the bigger uh, productions that are going on so so we've actually been 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 not too not too bad good good and how did this all begin i mean did you get approached did you approach them what, what were your feelings around uh, being filmed doing your day-to-day -day job yeah, it's a good question and one that's asked frequently now, well, and frequently at the beginning, how did it all happen? Um, and it came out of the blue, really. Uh, we were approached, that time I was working at, at Scaledale, um, we were all together and um, Daisy Beck approached us and said, would we be interested in making a programme following, um, you know, the modern day James Harry or equivalent, or as close to the equivalent um, as we could find. And uh, and it went from there really. My initial thoughts were one of excitement and that we should, you know, do it and go for it because I reasoned that it would be um, a lot of fun and it would be that we didn't have anything to lose because if we looked silly on television, then so be it. We look silly and that's it, and everything's forgotten after time. Um, and if it worked, then you know, thought maybe might be might be a good thing to do. And I felt it quite passionate that the practice that that we were doing, were, it wasn't expert or high, you know, high end sort of super vet stuff, but it was genuine and it was worthy. And it, you know, we worked hard and we tried to do the best that we could for our our clients and their animals. And I thought it was something that would be worthy to be to be shown and, and worthy. To share with anybody who who fancy watching on a on a Tuesday night, um, so so I was quite keen. Um, others in the practice were less so, um, and eventually, after a few weeks of toing and froing, we thought, well, let's give it a go, and and here we are, um, filming for series later. <laughs> yeah, series eleven. We're filming for now. Gosh, series eleven. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that, yes, that's a lot. In fifteen since two thousand fifteen, that's a lot, a lot of series. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. The, in the spring of two thousand and fifteen, and it was funny because they they said the channel really desperately wants some sheep and some lambs, and if you don't have any sheep or lambs, then it's not going to happen. <laughs> and we were looking at our sort of calendars and said, well, you know, you do realise it is the beginning of April now, and lambing time is is a defined time. It, it's not. You know, it's a seasonal thing. That's what lambs are. Um, so it was very rushed to to start. And I remember the first sheep that I filmed uh, being lambed. Um, there was like a sort of palpable, you know, sort of um, easing of tension when they got a story of a lamb being born. Um, so yeah, so spring 2015. Now what we? So yeah, five five and a bit years. Yeah. yeah. We made a that's a wonderful story, though, that the expectation was there had to be lambs. They've got to have lambs straight on, yeah, yeah, regardless yeah, yeah. of the calendar, for the agricultural calendar. They it was funny. And then, marches. Yeah, well, of course, the, 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 the commissioners were all based down in, in London and, and weren't quite so aware of the seasonality as, as we were up in, uh, in the wilds of, of Yorkshire. 
well, at least you've educated them and the rest of us about all that all that sort of thing now but uh -huh. how, how did how did uh, uh, being known affect you because you know this goes out it's a very popular show and so you must be recognized uh, not just not just around where you are but wherever you go you must be recognized yeah i was out the other day actually um with with um with with my, my son mountain biking in the forest uh, we met up with one of his mates and his dad um and we were cycling along in, in the forests safe two meters apart obviously and um there were some people at one of the intersections on the paths in the woods i said oh that's the yorkshire vet there isn't it um so it yeah it happens i don't know it depends sometimes it happens or it seems to happen quite a lot and you're recognized in random places um the airport i once got recognized in the french alps up a mountain okay. uh, by, by a french lady um uh, and then and then other other times yeah it, it, I don't know, it's funny it's weird it, it's it, i'm not a very you know i'm quite a, a, a quiet sort of shy person and and to think that you know i'd be doing something like like this talking to you or i remember this time about this time last year getting an award from from you guys in, in leeds and standing on on the stage and feeling completely overwhelmed by the the whole situation but it's amazing how you adapt and how i found how i've adapted to to, to that sort of position of being on telly um it doesn't seem so alien anymore okay if that makes sense. you just sort of you just yeah. get used to it and, and adapt to it and yeah. it's a really good job that you do else otherwise I'd, I'd be having a nervous breakdown i think by now yeah but the, the beginning that very first series you know there was the first episode that went out because at that point we'd got no idea what the response would be whether we'd get you know criticized or ridiculed or or, or what really it was really quite tense and quite stressful um and then as time went by and it obviously became um uh, evident that it was a, a popular program and, and people liked it then it, it, it sort of changed from being anxious to being um you know you felt quite proud that you were part of this amazing team of people creating something that had an impact to you know two million people on a tuesday evening and and that's an amazing feeling and uh, that, that without trying to 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 do this i was just being a vet and doing my job you could have an impact on people all over the world and last week i got a letter from a, a lad in in australia who had some um disabilities and he watches the program in australia avidly and he sent me a card and a letter and a photograph and a little booklet that he'd made um and to, to touch people on the opposite side of the world without even sort of trying or any expectation of that is is ama amazing is the only word i can use to to describe it yeah it's an extraordinary impact isn't it with that comes values and ethics and all that all that side of thing but also you know when you first started it must have been a real insight into how television programs are made particularly these sort because working with you you can't do things over and over again or could you just try and do that slightly differently we're going to get a different angle you know the the, the camera operators have got to work very very fluidly with you do you, yeah. do you feel now that it's developed into a, a real team approach where you're part of the production team you're part of the crew rather yeah. than just being people being told oh stand there stand there we're just coming around here yeah. very much so yeah and and from all levels from the almost the kind of researching stories or now i know very well what will make a good story and what won't make a good story and you, you know the ingredients and then you know how the setup needs to be built and how to film it and you know there's obviously the technical things like you know cutaways and you know non-sync wides and all this kind of stuff that you know need to be filmed to give to the edit but then even sort of but yeah beyond that it's knowing what's going to make a story and how in 
the construction of a program you might you know flash back to a previous story which allows a bit more scope um all these things yeah i, I now feel like a um well, i wouldn't say an expert but i, I know I've, yeah i've learned an awful lot about the the making of of not just a television program but the kind of creation of a, a, a of an of a narrative about it so it's not necessarily in fact it's hardly ever the the the, the peculiarity of the canine illness that's of interest it's you know the the owner behind the dog and their story that, that is really the interesting bit um and that's something that i've learned e even little things like you know I remember we once went to see a horse with laminitis to, to film that and and that's a condition where the feet become extremely painful um and it's an interesting condition it's a serious condition and we went to film it and I was thinking, oh, you know, this is great. We've not had a horse with laminitis as a story. And uh, the PD said, well, the trouble is it just was standing there. It didn't look like there was anything wrong with it. So for all I could say, Craig, this is a very serious condition. To the viewer, it just looked like a horse that was standing still, which it was. Um, st stuff like that that you never would, would think of. Um, you know, a black Labrador is a lot less photogenic than a you know a, a, a fluffy alpaca with huge eyes and expression in its face and a, a black labrador looks like a, a two-dimensional silhouette stuff like that that you, you people who know about filming that know that is obvious but to me as a as just a, a vet i've got no idea but now yeah i'm 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 not an expert but I've, I've had a big insight into the world and it's been fascinating yeah and, and how do your clients feel do they do, does anybody ever look disappointed if you turn up and you don't have cameras so the, there's the, they fall into about three categories really one bunch um definitely don't want to be on telly and would you know would say no absolutely not um and then there's about a third that are ambivalent and and don't really mind too much um sometimes maybe need a little bit of persuading but but generally haven't got any great objection and then there's the third camp who actively desperate to get on telly who would you know turn up with makeup on and um you know the hair all done and you know almost you know pushing their cute cat to the to the front of the of the waiting room to to to, to get in the shot um and they tend not to to overlap they, they tend to be quite those kind of characters and again you know you can quite quickly i find tell who are going to be the the characters that will say you know what i don't want to do this and the ones that are really um pa it's, it's passion really if you're passionate about your your farm or your the animals that you nurture and look after or you you know you, you totally love your you know cat more than anything in the world that that comes across and, and that's what makes the you know the the the, the color of the of the characters really um, yes, you, talk, you talked earlier julian about the um the owners or the uh, or, or the farmers etc the people behind the animal and the, yeah. you the word there of characters and of course james herriot references are bound to come through and his books are all about characters as well and they're mainly the human characters rather than the animal characters do you think there's something particularly that it was important to to that notion of character and i'm not suggesting other regions don't have characters but something about the yorkshire character that really works with this because you're a yorkshireman born and bred aren't you mm, yeah you think being yorkshire being in yorkshire is something really yeah fundamental to this program it, it's a good question um i think i think yes is is obviously the short answer if it was called the the surrey vet or you know the the hampshire vet it probably wouldn't have quite had the same pull um you know yorkshire is obviously the biggest county um so we we, we you know there's a, we have a size um um there's a massive diverse mix of, of of scenery and 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 people in in yorkshire which i think is is appealing um i think you know it taps into the harriet connection which was obviously all all based in yorkshire um whether the people i mean i think certainly there's a 
not to say peculiarity to be careful quite how I phrase this but there's a an idiosyncrasy that comes with um, some Yorkshire farmers which is quite appealing um, that said I, I've worked in in the north of Scotland and I've worked in the Cotswolds um, and you know I've traveled to other parts of the, of the country um, as a vet and you know and, and, and not as a, as a vet and I'd, I, I'm not convinced that there's anything per se about Yorkshire that makes Yorkshire people sort of um, more whatever affable or quirky than, than in other parts of, 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 of Britain. Um, but I do think the whole Yorkshire, it's a, quite a strong image, isn't it? Yorkshire's, you know, really put itself on the map in, in recent years. And I think it taps into that, the, you know, there's the a rugged element and there's the, you know, dry kind of humorous element. And there's, you know, there's lots of facets that you can work with, I think, with a, um, a Yorkshire kind of um, character base, as it were. Yeah, very diplomatically answered. And I think coming, because I came from the Midlands up to Yorkshire back in the uh, late 80s. And uh, obviously, Midlands characters, Birmingham characters have a particular style to them. And, and when I came to Yorkshire, and I came across the Yorkshire sense of humour and the Yorkshire um, cutting through the crap, as it were. I'll just tell you yeah. straight off. Yorkshire Television security person once said to me, I'd only been up a few months, and he said, what's up with your face? And I went, what? And he said, that's better, you're smiling now. And it's that <laughs> sort of thing that in Birmingham, you'd be thinking, what are you saying? What are you saying? But in Yorkshire, it was kind of like, it was, it was just, a, it was more direct. I think there's something about that directness that, that, that comes across yeah. in your, in, in your programme. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and, uh, th th there is a, a directness and there's a, there's a, um, I mean, Paul Stead um, from, from Daisy Beck, he, he said, you know, it's, it's uh, real, raw and rural were his three, you know, the way he summed up the programme and it, it's all those things and there's a rawness and a, a, an honesty about it that is quite appealing um, and it's, it's, you know, it's very real, we, we don't, everything that's filmed happens um and you, you know sometimes there's the odd end scene that we do that we might not do in normal course of life but everything is actual veterinary veterinary stuff um so it is, it is real and of course it's it's rural in large parts so, uh, absolutely and beautiful beautiful countryside uh, and as you said earlier julian it's got it's it's popular nationally internationally and i have to have the goggle, goggle box moment because I, i'm a great fan of <laughs> And if yeah. I'd been around when I was making programmes and one of my programmes featured on it, I'd have been so made up. And Gogglebox features the Yorkshire Vet quite often. And people look forward to it. The Goggleboxes themselves look forward to it because, well, they're usually showing the scenes where you're getting involved in something really unpleasant or something to do with some horse's anatomy or you've got your arm up somebody's uh, backside, mm -hmm. uh, some animal's backside, I ought to say. Um, how does that feel to you? Is that an accolade to you when you see other programmes referencing you? Completely, completely. I mean, it, it was, there's, <laughs> there's, there's been a lot of high points over the last five and a bit years, um, one of which was getting our award from you um, last year, which still has pride of place in my um, uh, bookcase downstairs. Um, but, and there's, there's been lots of high points, but I have to say, when we were first on featured on Gogglebox, it, it was it was one of the best accolades, the most um, exciting things. And of course, we didn't know it was going to be on because we hadn't got any um, kind of prior connection. But one of the research people had a friend who worked on Gogglebox, and I think they just got a bit of a tip off that they'd been watching uh -huh. one of our a clip from one of our episodes and. I can't remember how we found out. It was about half past eight, one Friday evening, and I was just making tea, and I just happened to... I can't remember how I heard about it. And anyway, yeah, so there it was. And now it's kind of become a bit commonplace, and the kids will say, say oh, are you on Gogglebox tonight, Dad? As if it's <laughs> like just a normal thing that happens to, to normal people. Um, 
so so yeah that was that was was really amazing when we managed to get to, to get them there and as you say now it's you know it's not uncommon uh, sometimes i feel like we're hogging it a little bit ah not at all not at all and junior as well as being a vet and having that busy life plus you've got your family you're also a published author and you write a weekly column for the yorkshire post i understand how do you yeah. find um have you got elastic question. time well i don't know really I, I do most of the the writing i guess a bit like james Howitt did when he was on on call so if i'm on duty on a weekend or an evening i can't do very much in terms of going anywhere or going out or, or meeting friends or anything so i tend to use that time to uh, recollect stories and things um but the books the books came about i never you know obviously expected I'd be able to write a book, let alone, um, well, I'm writing the sixth one at the moment that's due out sometime next year. Um, and you never ever expected that. But after the very first episode of The Yorkshire Vet, um, I, I went into work the next day and checked the emails, expecting a whole load of comments about it and things. And there was two that sprung out. One was from an electrician in Derbyshire who said that he'd watched the program and thought it was great but um, couldn't help noticing that we needed to get our, some of our electrical equipment pat tested and he could offer a good quote. Um, and the other was from a book agent who said, um, I saw your program last night. Uh, we really enjoyed it. We, I think you'd, you'd be able to write a really good book. Would you be interested? Um, and so I said, thank you very much. But I said, can you make contact again in six weeks when we've finished this? foray into telly and, and when life's got back to normal and six weeks later he was back in touch and life hadn't got back to normal um because we were talking about series two and three um and by that time I'd, I'd written about the first four chapters of of the book that was horses heifers and hairy pigs my first book and i kind of thought i never thought i'd be involved with the television program and if we can do that and make that work Who's to say I can't write a book? And I got completely enthralled by the process. And the same, it's the same kind of process as making a television program. You've got the ups and downs of the emotion and the drama. And 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 once you've got that sort of pattern, uh, I, I enjoyed it um, in, in this, the same way that it's enjoyable making entertainment on telly. Entertainment in a book is a similarly rewarding um, thing to do, I think, now. So Excellent. it's opened a whole part of my brain that I never knew existed. Oh, well, now you know it does. And who knows what else is in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what does the future hold for you and for the series? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I've given up trying to predict the future, um, if I'm honest, because I'd have never predicted, um, predicted this. Um, I've been at, at um, a mixed practice in Burbridge for the last sort of what th nearly three years, um, and I've just opened a practice in in Weatherby uh, with some friends. So uh, yeah. I, d I don't know is the short answer. I've stopped trying to predict what's going to happen anymore. I'd go just go go with the flow. Well, that's a good that's a good philosophy. It's a good way to go, and it it served you well. And and I can't imagine a time when you're not there up on our screens and. <laughs> You get the award last year, you know, the Yorkshire Vet getting the award last year was so well deserved and you know, RTS Yorkshire are proud of are, are proud of you and uh, proud of, of, of what you what you do. So thank you very much for, for joining us today. And I hope maybe we'll have another chat sometime in the future when we see where your next travels take you in terms yeah, of I mean, your, yeah, who knows? I'd love to I'd love to chat again and I love supporting organizations like this. Um, and it's been a pleasure to have been supported. Um, uh, the Yorkshire Vet's been supported so strongly by um, you guys at the RTS. So thank you very much for that. And, and thank you for uh, today's chat. It's been fun. It's my pleasure. And I will see you again, I hope, very, very soon. Excellent. Take Thanks, Will. Bye now.